All right, today we're going to talk about water damage. I hate water damage. It's really difficult to give it um, an effective professional treatment. You can spend a lot of time on it and not get a great result. And part of the problem with water damage is that the first person to see that phone really has the best chance of recovery. If you have a phone that's still wet, then you can almost always get that phone back. As long as you do the, the best job from the get-go, that's your best chance of getting the phone restored. By the time it gets to me, it's, it's a, a big problem. So I want to give you some information and show you some things that might help you do a better job with your water damage repairs as the first man on the scene. So I have in here um, an example phone that we're going to go through this together and do a water damage recovery and see what happens. So you can kind of see what it looks like. So this board comes to me with a note and the note says backlight went out after water treatment. So this board has already been treated by a shop professionally for water damage and this is what it looks like when it comes to me. This is what the back side of the board looks like when it comes to me. So the first thing that you notice is that it still has this um, it has this sticker on it. I mean you really you really can't do any kind of water damage treatment with that sticker still on it. And when we take the sticker off, you know, kind of from far away, it looks okay. It doesn't look, you know, like it's completely rusted out. Um, but we really need to look at this under the microscope and see what we're, we're, what we're dealing with. On the back side of the board, that board has clearly been exposed to water. And when that happens, when you see a evidence like that, you have to take the shield off in order to do any effective treatment at all. If you're not able to take off the shield, then, then you're really not doing water damage treatment at all. There is going to be corrosion under that shield. And if you don't deal with that, then that is going to continue over time to make the components more brittle, more susceptible to uh, sudden failure down the road. And there's, there's no reason for that. So if you take the shield off the back, then you can see the board, you can get some cleaners on there, and you can do the best, best uh, job that you can to get this uh, board restored. And you really need to do that first. You need to do that um, every single time as part of a, you know, a quality professional water damage treatment. So I'm going to try to show you what I see under the microscope. This... Uh, Maybe you can get a little bit of light on it. All right, so let's look under the microscope. And we can see that there's, you know, there's definitely corrosion that's still on this board. I want you guys to be able to, to see that. All right, so there's corrosion on this board around here. You know, when you, when you look, all of this black ends of components, um, there's, there's still just, you know, uh, dried deposits on this board. So this board really hasn't been cleaned at all. Now let's take a moment and we're going to desolder those shields. So let's see if we can kind of watch how, how that's done. I use... Um, this thing called an omnivice. You can really use any kind of a board holder. And it's it's not hard to take these shields off. It just takes a, a few minutes. It's kind of a pain, but it's definitely doable. On the 5, uh, 5S and 5C, uh, there's a little antenna that you need to first take off. So we'll take that off with some tweezers. And then I'm just going to attach the board to this Omnivice. I don't think there's any way to zoom. Not that I can tell. All right, we'll attach the board to the Omnivice. Hopefully we'll come, we'll come back with some better technology and do these videos again. But for now, I didn't, I just kind of had to I had to say something about this water damage. Even if technology is going to limit this video. Alright, so the on the 5S and the 5C, the solder that's holding the shield to the board is a, is a relatively low melt solder. 
So if we just sort of apply some um, gentle heat to the joints, and I'm using a dental pick to just sort of apply some upward pressure, then it starts to come off right away. So I'm going to use this dental pick and a little bit of heat. Now putting the shields back on is something that, you know, you, you can do for a nice professional finish. But honestly, you know, for a water damaged phone that you're trying to save, you know, don't worry about how hard it is to put the shields back on. You can leave the shield off. It's there for uh, EMI, electromagnetic interference protection. And you'd be better off to just leave it off than to not take it off at all. Now when you're doing this bottom shield, there is a section uh, towards the bottom. We've got it off most of the way, but you can see that it's still attached there on the bottom. There is a bridge across the board there that the shield is soldered to. So we need to just put a little heat back and forth across that bridge. And you want to try not to put a whole lot of uh, torsion bending of the board. All right, so now that shield is off. Now let's look and see what it looks like under the microscope. I really wish that, that somebody could give me a a tip or a trick on how to make a webcam pick up an LCD image here. I have no idea. All right. So I have this new camera and I have uh, the black magic intensity to capture and had it all set up, but then I did not have a Thunderbolt cable. All right, here we go. Look how awful this looks under the shield. This was sold as a water damage cleaning professionally done and this is what this looks like. This is Frank Rust. I really wish you guys could see that there. Maybe that's a little better. Now look at that. It's just complete, complete and utter disaster. That is what I want you to see. This is extremely typical of what it looks like under these shields. You have to take them off. If you don't take them off, you're, you're not doing water damage treatment at all. That is just absolutely nasty. And this is the backlight area. So this, you know, this came in with a complaint. Backlight went out after water damage cleaning. I wonder why. This is the coil. When I tell you it's never the coil, it's never the coil. Look at that coil. The coil looks fine. Um, the, the coil is pretty well protected by the black underfill, which is pretty waterproof. But if we look over here at these components, you know, this is the, um, you know, other components, the backlight driver and the backlight diode and some, uh, a bunch of capacitors there, and those, those look horrifying. All right, so let's, let's continue to look around on this board and see what else looks, looks good or bad. All right, this area here is the power chip, the main power management chip, and I can see some uh, corrosion or oxidation on these um, capacitors near there. But overall, that doesn't look really bad, which probably tells us why the phone was able to come back on, but it, it just wasn't able to have a display. This chip looks really corroded. There's just a ton of corrosion on this board. Down here in the baseband area, you know, there's a lot of corrosion under here. So this, this is what I'm talking about when I, when I say I absolutely hate to work on water damage. You know, phones come to me with water damage. When it, when it has water damage, that's a major repair. That's going to take a lot of time to, to, to address all of this. And it's not something that's like, oh, yeah, this is a backlight problem. Solve the backlight problem. Oh, by the way, it has water damage. It's, it's really a great big problem. And this is all preventable. Look how this is ancient. This is all dried on here. Um, this is all preventable if you address the water damage right away. Even if your customer comes in, yeah, I can't put it in rice. Uh, yeah, I have, um, I have tried to power it on a bunch of times. You know, that's okay. It's still better for the water damage to be addressed right away 
we've taken the shields off. All right, so what I'm doing over here is I'm going to go ahead and take off the other um, baseband area shield just because this foam looks so bad. All right, so I've got my hot air back on, and I've got a dental pick. And I am just going to put some heat on this and try to pry these shields up. And then this one will start here. Now this bottom base band shield on the top side of the board also has um, an area to watch out for. So I'll just remove it up a little bit. Now if you don't have a hot air station, it's still possible to desolder the shields. It's more work, but it's doable. You can use something like a chip quick uh, low melt solder alloy. And if you apply that with a soldering iron around the edges of these uh, solder connections, then you'll be able to um, lift, you know, kind of lift the, melt those connections and lift off the board. Lift the shield off the board. Okay, so under that area, this was the top side of the phone. And remember, this top side of the phone looks relatively okay. And this side, this board here under that shield looks okay. And remember, when we looked at the shield itself, you know, this, this shield looks okay. It doesn't look, you know, horribly, you know, dried with water. The bottom shield looks awful. So when it looks like that, it te it's telling us, hey, there's been, let me look at that. This board is telling us that, that there has been uh, water on the bottom of the board. All right, what's our next step? Next step is to give it a professional uh, ultrasonic cleaning. So I'm going to use, um, you guys have, have seen this before. I'm going to use this... Uh, ultrasonic sweep frequency cleaner, drop it in there, turn it on for a couple of minutes. The cleaner that I use is Branson EC. It has directions on it. How to dilute it exactly right in order to use it in any ultrasonic cleaner. And this stuff works pretty well. This is a heated sweeping frequency ultrasonic cleaner. And what that means is that the different components on the board um, will uh, oscillate at different frequencies. And so the, the ultrasonic cleaner is, is making these sort of tiny little vibrations that are shaking off the corrosion on the board. It's not 100%. It doesn't come out looking factory new. It's not going to take a, 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 a black penny and turn it into one that looks like it came out of the mint. It's not that good but it's far, far better than the old style uh, cleaner that I used to use right over there. This is the typical, what we call jewelry style ultrasonic cleaner. And that thing is great for cleaning rings and eyeglasses, but it's really, it's really not as effective. And I didn't used to believe that. I thought, you know, let's see some evidence. And since I'm a scientist, I have one of those, you know, seems fine. It makes bubbles. Seems like it would do a good job. And then uh, I, and then when I bought this one, which you know the, this one is a, is a heck of a lot more expensive than the jewelry style one. So I wanted to know whether or not that really makes a practical difference for cell phone boards. And when you look at the boards that come out of either one, a lot of times they look kind of the same. Functionally, though, when I I had, you know, one specific board that I had put through the ultrasonic cleaner. I had taken the shields off and done a professional cleaning, and the board did not come back on. I had spent time troubleshooting the board. I had attached DC power supply. I had gone short hunting. I had spent a long time on it, and I had given up. Too much time. Can't put any more time into the board. And then when I got this ultrasonic cleaner, I put it through here, and the board came back on. So that really kind of highlights for me that there is a difference between the two different styles of cleaners. All right, so here's our board back out, and I'm going to turn it over and put it back in for another couple of minutes. 
Now, the, this is a water-based um, detergent, the EC, Branson EC cleaner. So after the board comes out of here, then we need to put it in some alcohol. Now the alcohol will displace the water molecules and whatever minerals or anything else that's in solution. And it's going to leave behind alcohol, which itself will just evaporate off of the board. So we're going to give this another minute or two, and we'll talk about our next steps. Once this comes out, we're going to look at it under the microscope, and we're going to use a brush to continue to try to clean the corrosion. The ultrasonic cleaner is great at uh, shaking things up and making them loose, but we need a brush in order to get rid of the um, get rid of the corrosion. And then at that point, you kind of have the decision to make. You can dry it, and you can you know turn put put the board back in the foam and see whether or not it works. You can just sort of decide that that is your level of professional water damage cleaning, and it takes about the amount of time that, that, that you see here. If you want to go, if, the, if it's a really important phone, it has data on it, and you need to save baby pictures, then you can go one step further, or a lot of steps further, and you can start to look for the damaged components. You can start to use your soldering iron to um, to clean up the really horrifying looking joints. You can look for and detect the bad components and working from a donor board, you can begin to replace those components and that's, that's really where you get into spending a lot of time on these phones. Um, is it worth it? You know, at, at a certain point you can replace the phone. So in the phone world we're always sort of battling that margin where there's always an upper uh, upper value to any phone because you can just go replace the phone. In the case of data, that might be a little bit higher and it might make more sense in order to pursue these water damage claims. Um, so it's really just sort of uh, something for you to, to explore and see um, what makes sense for you to do as a business doing water damage repairs. But one thing that we know for sure is that the better job that you do the, as the person who sees the phone first and fastest then you're going to have the, a better result. And that's really going to save a lot of phones from ever getting to me or getting to the point where you have to spend hours and hours trying to troubleshoot these phones. All right, that's enough time. And, and this is all just sort of, you know, very, very practical. There's no, you know, I haven't done a ton of research, you know, measuring exact numbers of minutes for this stuff to, you know, to kind of, go through. So now I've put the board here in a solution of the 90, 99% isopropyl alcohol to just sort of displace the cleaner. And then I could leave it in there for a while, but I'm going to go ahead and see what we have. Let's see if we can get a microscope view for For you guys. All right, let's look and see what it looks like. Let's look first at our connectors area. And I bought these brushes. You can use a toothbrush. These seem to be a little bit sturdier. I'm not sure how to make it sharper. All right, so I'm just going to brush the board here. Now that minor corrosion has mostly come off. This board, the top side of the board looks good. So let's kind of look at one of those areas that we looked at before. All right, can you see, I don't know if you can see this at all, this spot here. So this spot here, you can see that that particular little capacitor there has oxidation. This would be a candidate for replacement. 
these might be a candidate for reflow. They just don't look as silver shiny factory as they should. But all along here, this looks good. And that's sort of how you would work. If you want to continue to go the extra mile, you'd replace that component from a donor board. If that was the only component on this, on this phone, on this board that looked like that, then, then I would absolutely replace that. Um, if there's a ton of them, then you just won't really, it won't be feasible. All right, let's look back here at the, um, at sort of the, the backlight circuitry. Now this has gotten a lot better, but it's still not fantastic. This may work. I don't know. That's what we're going to have to, to just sort of find out. This was the component that was really incredibly rusted out. And then you can see this component really should be replaced. That component should be replaced. This component should be replaced. Um, but this is really, really tight clearance in there. Technically, it's difficult to actually go in there and replace these chips. You don't want to start reflowing your, your heavily underfilled glass IC. This is a touch IC. You know, you, you really don't want to heat that sucker up too much. This is your backlight diode, which may or may not work. Let's see if we can get some measurements so that we can kind of maybe know in advance a little bit. All right, I'm going to grab a multimeter and test out that backlight diode. Let's, well, I'm going to flip the board over first and let's look at the backlight filter since this is specifically here for a backlight problem. Let me try to show you this. this is good. All right, this is your LCD connector on the iPhone, on the iPhone 5C, that thing there. And then the LCD or the backlight filters are kind of around that area. And we can kind of set the multimeter just to have a quick continuity test. If they look good in general, they are good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So all of these filters have continuity, which means low resistance across them. So that is a mark that they are going to work fine. I'm flipping over the board again, back to this backlight area. You can see the backlight filter or the backlight coil again. And this area on the phone, if you've ever looked at an iPhone 5S, um, you know, this is the 5S, I've been saying 5C. If you looked at the iPhone 5S, it has um, a little, um, I don't know, set of holes. This thing, that. Which, you know, I don't know if it's if it was designed for heat transfer or what. Look how horrible that looks on the shield. This is the shield itself. So that, that looks really horrible. Water goes in there, and that's right where the backlight circuitry is on the 5S. So that's why we see this problem. I'm setting my multimeter to diode testing mode, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to test here. across the diode and I see a one in one direction. And now I'm switching probes. I'm measuring again. And I see um, a, a lower reading. So that's good. If the if it was a one meaning closed in both directions, then that that would be bad. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and use some alcohol on this back side of the board and really just scrub it with a brush. and see if we can get some of that corrosion off.
Now, when you're, you know, the, it, it's entirely possible that all of this work that we're doing today right now, you know, we've maybe put, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes into this phone already. This phone may never turn on again. It may never work, in which case this is really uh, difficult. You know, do you charge your customers for your time? You know, I prefer to charge uh, no fix, no fee, but that means you can only take repairs that you think have a reasonable chance of success. This one, you know, since it came in, well, this one kind of came in unbidden, so I would have turned it down, but it just showed up, and I have a bad habit of working on things that just show up or wanting to use them as examples of a video. All right, that's not good right there. There's a tiny little component stuck here between these two big coils. Let's cluck him off. And... Well, that thing's really stuck on there. Looks like a little tiny uh, resistor. Let's take a quick view of the board and see if we can guess where he, he goes. So you can hopefully see that this board overall looks a heck of a lot better um, than it did before. This board is not going to continue to have uh, corrosion over time. What's been done has been done, but the corrosion itself is gone. What we've left behind is some amount of um, kind of brittle components, things that have gotten oxidized or a little bit of damage on the end caps. You know, if this was uh, the fate of the world depended on this phone, you'd want to replace anything that did not look factory. But overall, this phone, this board right now, there's a, a spot right here, there's a spot right there, there's a spot right there. But overall, it, it has gotten a whole lot better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on a soldering iron and see if I can kind of really just shore up joints that look oxidized and are therefore brittle. This is not going to help a damaged, like shorted out capacitor come back to life. You can't magically solder wands like a magic wand and you know, re rebuild the internal components of capacitors. Well, here's the spot where uh, that little resistor came, used to live. Do you see that right there? Here's a component that looks pretty pretty ugly, and then here's two solder solder pads that or what's left of them they're heavily heavily oxidized which is why that component came off so that component is almost certainly bad anyway all right so you know that's a good spot to kind of do a little bit of work So all I'm doing is just using a soldering iron and some flux. Flux is a really good, uh, a really good, you know, chemical for removing oxidation. That's what it does. Its job is to make solder flow and remove oxidation. I just took off that other bad looking component right there. I could get out the schematic. I can look up and see, you know, what, what do these two little things do? I could replace them from a donor board, but you know, a lot of times with, with phones, the way they are um, designed, you know, you've got all these chips that make decisions and talk to each other, and they talk to each other via signals or data signals um, that go through the wires in the board, and those d data signals are, are um, you know, kind of look like a a heartbeat would look like if you were staring at a heart rate monitor in a hospital, which is, uh, you know, kind of um, biological data if, if you want to go, go that far. Um, so you can have data that looks nice and pretty, 
or you can have data that's kind of rough. And a lot of the jobs of these tiny components on the board, the you know various capacitors that are that are plugged in everywhere, is to kind of smooth out and filter that data so that it looks really clean, and therefore it can be read by the um, by the the chips that that the data is going to very easily. And so when the data looks nice and clean, then you're going to have a very efficient, highly functioning uh, board. And if you have some capacitors that are gone and therefore not doing their job, then you can have um, you can have a result where the data may not be as clean as it should be, and that can cause um, you know errors and and little little tiny hiccups. What does that mean functionally, or what does that mean practically? You know, a lot of the time the answer is not much. If you are using your iPhone to look at, you know, funny cat videos, you know, are you going to, to you know, functionally notice a defect? And the answer is, you know, a lot of times no. So these tiny little capacitors that are, you know, really damaged, they could short out the whole phone, take it off, see what happens. If it does have a functional defect, get another one, put it back. And that's sort of what I would consider a practical approach to, um, to board repair in this, in this scenario. You're not going to be able to save every single phone. You're not going to be able to put the kind of resources into um, making every board return to factory condition. It just doesn't make sense. So you have to find a balance. One way to find that balance is to, um, you know, not really worry about having um, signals that are 100% factory condition. Okay, it's time to, to go ahead and test this board. Um, you can, I'm just using some air to dry it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the housing. Ideally, you would use a test housing. And you'd want to look at the um, sort of mating side of all of these connectors to see what the um, to see what they look like. Sometimes you can save connectors, um, save a screen, save a camera by just taking a soldering iron and getting the corrosion off of the, um, the mating side of the connectors themselves without having to replace them. All right, since I don't have the shield back on there, I'm just putting a little bit of captain tape on the bottom of the board just so that it doesn't short out on the frame. You can start this board even without the frame at all. You can just attach a battery and a dock connector and a screen and start it up. All right. But in this case, I just kind of want to know whether or not the, the backlight is working on this phone. So let's just do a test and find that out and see whether or not there's more sort of general work that needs to be done to this phone. And I'm not really sure that I would be up for that. I am going to grab a, a test screen. Let's see. There's a good... And it does look like this shop was... Uh, replaced the battery, so that's good. That would definitely be required on this phone because we know that the phone had serious damage. Um, and we know that there was a lot of water on the bottom of the phone. The battery itself has a little circuit board that controls the charging of the battery and kind of ev evenly distributes and balances the charge between cells of the battery. All right, let's see what happens. So I've put it back together, 
and it looks like our backlight is working, so that's good. So the battery board, it's under tape. You can't really see it. If there's any chance that you have corrosion on there, like in this phone when there was so much corrosion on the bottom of the board, then you definitely want to replace that. If a battery blows up, that's a big deal. And that does happen. So if you see any evidence that water hit that battery, or even as a general best practice, you should replace the battery. All right, so this looks like this phone is now uh, back alive. It has a backlight, and I can continue uh, sort of troubleshooting uh, different features of the phone, but we're going to call it a day on this video. This is a no backlight water damaged iPhone 5S, and it, um, it, it came back with uh, a little bit of professional cleaning. And anybody can do this. You know, this is not something that you need extensive microsoldering training for. You can go get a quality ultrasonic uh, uh, machine. You can get um, a, a hot air station or even just learn to use a soldering iron to get those shields off. And that is really, really required for water damage treatment whenever you see that water has been inside under those shields. And that's it.